If you start in data engineering, one of the things that people scream at you is learn SQL and learn Python. They don't really ever really tell you why you should learn SQL and you should learn Python. So in this video, we're gonna be covering why you should learn SQL, why you should learn Python, when you should use SQL, when you should use Python, and all of the things that kind of make data engineering come together and come to life. So yeah, let's let's get into it. So first off, we have SQL. So some of you might have noticed that it sometimes it's called SQL, sometimes it's called SQL. Both names are totally acceptable. Generally speaking, the more experienced you get, you go from calling it SQL to calling it SQL, just because it's just a little bit fancier, right? It's one less syllable, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of history behind that because like the, there was two different versions of SQL SQL like freaking 70 years ago or something like that and then like one was called SQL and one was called SQL and then they kind of like competed and so like then they became the same thing essentially it's a lot of culture there definitely look it up if you're interested in that but like at the end of the day SQL is used to transform data so you can use it to do things like count data. So maybe you wanna count how many times I've logged in or count how many times I have liked posts, different things like that. That's like aggregating data. At Facebook, we call that move fast and count things which is a very common like analytical pattern. Another one is join. So sometimes you need to take two different data tables and two different data sets and merge them together. And you need to use this on a join key, like so you can based on like user ID. So for example, like the data for the events might have a user ID in it, but it doesn't have country. So say we wanna know like the number of events by country, then we have to join the user data where we have the user's country and then we have the event data that has the user and the event and then you join those data together and then aggregate and that can be a very powerful thing so that's called join join is going to be the other most important keyword that you use in sql to create powerful data sets if you know those two you know join and group by you're going to get very far but let's cover just the other you know, simple keywords that are available in SQL. So you have select, which you just have to put at the top to like list the columns that you are gonna pick. This is kind of like the columns in Excel that you would work with. And then you have where, the where clause is just for filtering data so that you can remove rows from the data table. So like if there's any bad data or whatever, it's very common to like filter out bad data or weird data in the where clause in your SQL query. That's the basics, right? You can do a couple other things, right? Like you might need to do a thing called insert into so this is how you create new data and we will be going over how to do insert into in the lab here in a little bit and uh, you might also need to run a thing called delete so that's where you delete data and then there's also an update command where you can update data someone changes their name or they change their country or something like that those are going to be pretty much all of the commands that you need to learn in sql it's actually pretty straightforward to learn like uh, we'll be going over all of these fundamentals here very soon sql is great but it only can really move data that is already in the warehouse or database or in the data lake. If it doesn't, then SQL doesn't work as well. You need to use a different tool to get the data into the database or into the data lake. And that tool is almost always Python. So Python is a programming language that is actually designed to be very easy to learn. It's way better to learn than like learning C++, which is the, the first language I learned was C++. And Holy shit, C++ is such a bear to learn compared to Python. You use Python when you need to get data that is outside of the warehouse. Like maybe your data is in a Google Sheet, or maybe your data is in Salesforce, or maybe your data is anywhere else. It could be a website, or maybe it's in OpenAI because you're using AI to scrape data. You can use OpenAI with Python very easily. You use Python APIs to bring data in, and then you also use Python to schedule and create your data pipelines. You can think of it as like SQL is like these big blocks that allow you to transform data in a very efficient way. And then Python is the glue that puts everything together. And those are gonna be the two big tools and languages that you use in data engineering to create in a very powerful way. There are situations in which you could use either tool, Python or SQL to solve the same problem. This is actually very common with a tool called PySpark. In PySpark, right, you could write the same thing in Python that you could write in SQL. They are interchangeable. Both Python and SQL can express each other. It's just very difficult for SQL to access external things because it's 
it's designed to work in a very specific data warehouse space and it's designed for data transformation, not data extraction. At the end of the day, like if you can learn these two tools, you will be well on your way to becoming a very good data engineer. So uh, I will be creating a lab here in just a little bit. So uh, make sure to follow the next video in this series to catch that.